What is going on, guys? It's your boy, Apathy, and today I'm going to be giving you guys the best settings for Warzone 2. More visibility, higher FPS, less crashing. Are you struggling listening to footsteps? Well, I got you. And on top of it, for a little bonus, improving your aim, let's get right into it. So we're going to be starting off with the graphics tab. Now, for display mode, always rock the full screen. Make sure it's the right monitor, obviously the right graphics card. Make sure your screen refresh rate is on the right number. Whatever your monitor is, mine's at 240 Hz. So obviously you got to make sure it's on the right one because this will make a difference. Dynamic resolution off, VSync off. This will drain your frames. I have aspect creation on 16.9, custom frame rate unlimited. You can mess around with that. Now for the quality tab, I have this on a hundred, which is usually going to be whatever your resolution of your monitor is. Again, mine's a 1440p, so it's right. It's on a hundred. Obviously if you lower it down, you see the numbers go down. I have my fidelity cast on. This is a huge huge difference in quality so you can see i go show more i have this on a hundred percent this is going to make the game way look way way more clearer way more sharper it's going to make the graphics look amazing the only thing is it does drain some frames some people like to mess around with dlss instead but i personally love this i don't care if i lose 15 20 frames because the difference it makes is incredible i am on sma 2 t2x low video member scale on 90. uh people like to have this higher because it usually gives you more performance but if you're having issues with crashes maybe or stuff like that maybe stuttering hitching uh, you can lower this down to like 70, 60, and you might see an improvement in that. Text resolution, very low, 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 low. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of these low particle quality level, very low. Bullet impact spray off. Shader quality low. Tessellation off. Terrain memory minimum. Demand texture streaming off. Shader quality off. Uh, low, low, off, off, low, off low medium uh low ambient occlusion off so for a spot cast shape people have been talking about this where it might help with the stuttering or even the crashes you can put this on ultra or high i used to have it on lower low but i put it on medium like you can put this on high it might improve that situation so just to help you guys out a lot of these settings are low or off because they drain your fps and obviously you want a better performance while uh playing so again screen space reflections off low off on now people talk about boost there's not a big difference when it comes to doing boost so a lot of people just prefer to have it on on if you like it or you feel like it makes a difference then you can put it on boost but just make sure you have it on just on is fine steps of field off well the machine are all weapon motion are off and film grain have this on zero so the quality looks better now for my view i do have an fov of 120 in warzone i feel like warzone is better to have that wider fov just so you can see people so you can spot them in multiplayer it isn't as big of a deal but warzone is a whole different story so you definitely want to have your fov i will say between 110 to 120 is a good number you don't have to have it at 120 but at least at 110 i play on affected lower visual recoil weapon field of view it's currently on default but i did have it on uh wide so the gun looks smaller third person field of view 80 uh vehicle field of view default uh 50 and 50 percent now for the audio this is important so listen up i currently have it on headphones i'm a big home theater fan but currently the way the audio is i like headphones the most i feel like i can pick up footsteps easier master volume i have it on 80 i feel like you gotta blast the audio a little bit but i do use the go xlr which where i can like move the the knob for volume up and down so i can kind of control it on my side but i like to have the master volume at 80 dialogue volume of 50 this is obviously going to be call outs from your your character saying hey precision airstrike incoming uav inbound you know stuff like that enemy uav inbound so you definitely want to have this on i usually recommend like 50 to 60 you don't want to have it too high nor too low music volume on zero because you don't want no this you don't want any distraction distractions with music fx volume on 100 hit marker volume on 90 some people like this a little bit lower i definitely like to hear the hit markers um you can put it like 80 for example you definitely don't want it being too loud but you want to hear the hit marker sounds uh mono audio off so people have been messing around with this having it on and putting the mono mount zero i messed around with it but for some reason it just makes the audio overall kind of low and i didn't like that i feel like i struggled hearing footsteps sometimes so i turned it back off if you're wondering how to turn on proximity chat to talk in game make sure you have this on and then you can do push to talk or open mic so your mic is always picking up in game and there's one more secret setting that i want to show you guys that someone actually brought this up to me uh reduced tinnitus tinnitus sound i'm not sure how to pronounce that uh but basically it sounds from a concussion and flash grenade shell shock is replaced with a more dull murky sound uh i tried this on today and it definitely makes a difference it feels like before was everything was so like high pitched and, and like in a way a little bit annoying when i have it very loud but now it feels a little bit you know reduced and it's definitely good for listening now before we go to the in-game setting 
settings next slash controller settings uh let's talk about interface really quick because there's some big things i want to talk about first of all the view vertical heads up display aka the hud horizontal vertical you want to put this more inside so i have it on 50 some people will have this all the way down uh for example you could put it like on 40 you definitely want this on the lower side what this is going to do is push your hud in your 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 especially your mini map now i know there's no red dots but it's still important to see where teammates are on see where things are spawning maybe if you have a uav up things you want your mini map you want everything kind of being closer into the middle of the screen so this is going to do that so you kind of want to put this uh at a lower number mini map shape you also want this square because it's a big it's technically a bigger mini map which is really good uh make sure you have the rotations on and this is another thing if you want to figure out how to put you know the fps counter all these things it's going to be under telemetry i'm going to do show more and then you can click on whatever you want to put on the screen so it shows it another big important setting is you can actually have a center dot in the middle of your screen so basically when you're moving around the map and centering it's going to be a little dot in the center of your screen even if you don't have your gun pointing up and you don't have your crossers on the screen if you're just running around or whatever in a car it's going to be the center of the screen so this is really good um just for being ready for gunfights being ready for your opponents so I, I like i actually have this on this is a new setting i have mine on default some people like larger or largest you can test them out it does get pretty big so it kind of is a little annoying and another big thing is going to be the color customization so you know when you ping something on the map at the moment or when your teammate pings something on the map at the moment it's a white and what happens is on the mini map or in game it blends in with the buildings with the background uh with the trees whatever it is it's it blends in very easily so it's kind of hard to see maybe pay attention to or figure it out so that's something you want to change in this game and that's going to be your neutral so your neutral color is going to be basically the ping that's going to be a big thing so like if your teammate pings or if you ping something whatever color uh the color this is that's what the color is going to be so let's say you want that to be let's say green to pop out more instead of the white now every time a teammate pings or you ping something it's going to be green so make sure you change it and now for the last settings we're going to have to go through this one by one really quickly from the regular to advanced because there's a lot to talk about uh first of all obviously this is kind of personal preference i play on tactical flipped on controller vibration off so you know it doesn't bother me while i'm shooting okay so so for sensitivity i'm currently playing on 770.87 so obviously especially like in a game like warzone you need to beam kids you need to shoot pretty straight especially our range even though aim assist is a thing um even if you're a mouse and key this is important to note you want to be able to play on a lower sense so i really recommend between six to eight is usually six seven or eight and then ads sense you want to be around a six so for example if you do uh six six then one if you do seven seven then zero point eight seven or something like that so that is a good way to lower your ads and like even if though i'm playing on a slightly higher sense i am still having my ads sense slower so that way i can shoot very straight so you can also mess, mess around with the sensitivity multiplier uh i don't really like doing that because it throws me off a little bit and now for the next thing so i have automatic tactical sprint on I know there's another way to do to mess around with the setting but i personally just like it this way i maybe in the future might mess around with the auto move forward whatever that thing is but i, I i've been liking tactical spray you just got to be careful when engaging with gunfights you you know you got to be ready to have your gun up which you just get used to it and uh this is another big setting in warzone 2 prioritize interact now this is the old warzone setting where you know you pick up items really quickly you can reload with square but if you get into a gunfight or something or if there's a lot of loot even and you you is square it's always going to interact first and reload you have to hold at that point so people you tend to put tap to interact but you want prioritized to interact this is going to help you with that with that looting situation and it's going to make the game feel easier in warzone 2. armor play behavior apply all another big thing you want to be able to run around run around while you're plating and not to click it one by one sometimes it doesn't register because maybe you hit a movement it gets clunky apply all will make it more smooth for the next thing obviously you have targeted aim assist on in the advanced tab uh aim assist type so apparently black ops i don't know if it was a secret nerf or it was public but they nerfed it a little bit and i definitely felt it when i went to warzone 2 that's usually that's when they released the big update i was on black ops i'm back to default i i like black ops i did it just it's weird now it feels weird it feels like it doesn't really help it throws me off a little bit so i went back to default i've been playing really well so i have default on um so you can kind of mess around with those two i would, I would recommend either default or black ops uh for this gyro behavior or gyro behavior however you want to pronounce it i think this is more important for ps5 controllers i don't know but i have this off because apparently it can affect your controller aim response curve type dynamic this is a big thing i've been preaching since mw 2019 since 2019 mw cold war vanguard this game 
like have it on dynamic it's harder to improve someone came into my chat today on my twitch stream and said dynamic has been very hard i'm trying to adapt to it but i just can't seem to get it do you have any tips and all i said was lower your sensitivity and keep practicing because what dynamic does is it, it speeds up your sensitivity initially so that's why i recommend playing like six seven eight and then getting used to dynamic it definitely is a little bit it's it, it will what i like to say it, it allows you to reach your full potential like it maxes you out so like you play on center for a bit you know maybe practice your centering practice your aim a little bit but once you kind of get decent aim then switch to dynamic if you want that way you're like you're already like pretty good and then you really can max out that potential i have my ads sense multiplier focus on one ads sensitivity transition timing on instant and custom sensitivity per zoom off now the next thing dead zones dead zones are a big thing in call of duty especially if you're a controller player and you need to understand this is going to affect your aim in a negative way and or, or affect your movement in a negative way so left stick minimum this is basically your movement stick i always have this on 0.01 or 0.02 usually you don't really get stick drift on your left stick uh, it's more so your right stick because it's also really hard for your character to move on by itself so i have this on a very low so my, my controller reacts very quickly and it's very sensitive to moving right stick i have this on 0.05 which is basically the default that way i don't i can still control my aim if you have this on too high what happens is your dead zone basically gets increased so now you have less the lower it is the the more you can do those little minor adjustments mid gunfight if you play on a higher dead zone you're gonna realize very quickly like i dare you to test this out go play on 0 0.25 aim around go shoot people we're gonna feel this heavy you're gonna feel like it's hard to like trace people sometimes and then go all the way down to 0 0.05 and then you're gonna be like whoa this feels so smooth and clean and like loose and like it feels so much better and by default i think warzone 2 and nw2 has it on 0 0.15 so you want to lower it down to basically what the default is 0 0.05 and this is going to allow you to have better aim now if you have to go over like a 0 0.1 because your stick drift is really bad and you have to play on like 0 0.15 14 at that point i would really recommend on investing or trying to get a new controller because it, it is going to affect you in a really bad way so left stick max 0 0.7 basically this is going to be like you think of it your stick has to go all the way to hit the maximum speed on your on your controller so 0 0.7 is basically going to be it's going to lower that threshold so it's going to be closer so you just move it a little bit and boom you're already at, at the maximum so this is going to allow you basically to sprint faster move around faster it's going to it's your controller is going to be slightly more responsive when it comes to moving so i like to have this on a lower you know 0 0.7 0 0.75 if you get too low it feels very weird like your controller starts kind of bugging out a little bit because it's too it's too low you know what i'm saying so you kind of want to have it around here right stick max keep it on default i've messed around lowering this and you're going to notice like if you go like 0 0.9 your recoil control is going to be like better in a way it's like what like this is weird it's better but again you deal with that problem what i talked about it feels heavy it's going to become hard to trace people at range like up close you're probably going to feel amazing Medium to long range you're gonna take a hit so if you're unless you're like a beginner i really recommend to uh play this on 0 0.99 left trigger and right trigger you want this on 0 0.00 this is for instant response i use a battle beaver so my controller is basically like a button but it's still good to have it on zero just in case you don't auto move forward this is what people have been talking about using single tap but i have this on off and then people have been doing single tap to uh to sprint or run and i have this just on normal i just have all the settings off ground the mental off so you don't mantle random things automatic airborne uh, mantle partial i think if you turn it off it becomes hard to mantle stuff mid-air so like i don't like it off but I, I have it on partial automatic ground mantle off as well and uh i believe all this is just standard movement parachute auto deploy you definitely want this off in war zone 2 that way you know it, it, you're not you're gonna get shut out the air very quickly especially in the beginning of the game uh sprinting door bash on for sure ledge mantle behavior mantle only i have seen people use movement based uh i'm still kind of seeing if i want to use this uh but i've seen before like it basically what it does is like instead of having to press x again you know you have to press x to grab a ledge press x again to to fully mantle you basically jump on the ledge and then you move forward and automatically mantles you up it's supposed to be faster so i would, I would re recommend that and then off off weapon mount exit on weapon mount exit delay medium on off short delay free look toggle moderate and moderate all right guys those are my best settings for warzone 2 if you really enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like we'll be doing some more tip in depth videos for you guys please don't miss it you're gonna want to see those